Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, I'm collaborating with Prime Newtons. Him and I are working on the same impact world using two different methods. I'll be using keyhole contour method in complex analysis, and Prime Newton is using non-complex analysis. So check both our videos. So go to his YouTube channel. He's been working on so many interesting math questions, and subscribe, and stay tuned. Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to be validating these two interesting integrals. First one, I11, that is integral from 0 to infinity, ln square x over 1 plus x square dx. And then the second one, I12, that is integral from 0 to infinity, just ln x over 1 plus x square dx. So conveniently, we can evaluate the second integral, right? Which has to be equal to 0 using symmetry. Or we can use u substitution. For example, for the second integral, this i12, that is integral from 0 to infinity, ln x over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, let's use u substitution. Let me call this u as 1 over x. And then x has to be equal to 1 over u. So that's why your dx has to be equal to negative 1 over u squared, and then we have du. So using this, we can rewrite this as now. Okay, the same thing as, let me switch these to lower bound and the upper bound. From infinity to zero, and then we have ln of one over u over one plus one over u square times this negative one over u square and then du. This has to be the same thing as now the negative integral from zero to infinity. And then we have ln u over 1 plus u squared du, which is the same thing as now the negative i12. So that's why we can easily specify the value of this i12 is now equal to 0. Okay, then for the first integral, i11, integral from 0 to infinity ln square x over 1 plus x squared dx, we will be using this keyhole contour and branch cut, right? So this integral I11. Okay, that was integral from 0 to infinity. Then we have ln square x over 1 plus x square dx. So for this, I'll be calling this, say, um, f of z. That is ln square of the z over 1 plus z square. So we'll be using the ln, and then at this time, it has to be now on the branch cut. We'll be using the branch cut on the real axis, which is now that x is now less than 0. Okay, so that is what we have. So that's why in this case, for, for real um, z that is less than 0. Okay, then we can specify how your ln of now the z ln of z is equal to ln of absolute value of the z, now plus i pi. So that's why we can also say your ln of, now then i, e to the power of i theta, this has to be the same thing as ln of i, and then plus i theta. Okay, that will be an expression that we can use. So that's why from this, we can say your f of now z f of z has to be f of z has to be analytic on the imaginary of the z that is greater than now zero. Okay, which is an important part for this integral. And then at the same time, we will have a pole. Pole at z is equal to i. Which means we can use this keyhole contour, right? So we can maybe draw this semicircle. Okay, based on all these previous information, we can work on keyhole contour. So let me call, let's say, gamma r as the whole close contour. Then we can draw this semicircle. Okay. And then looking like this. And in this case, the top one, this is your semicircle, let's call CR, with the radius of the R that is greater than 1. Then at the same time, okay, you have the I that should be up there. And then this small one is going to be the circle, semicircle C, with, say, the radius of the epsilon. So this has to be 
Now the circle, the semicircle with the radius of the epsilon. Okay, this is now what we have. Then at the same time, okay, we have now the negative r and the r. Okay, then using this, we can work on some expression. Okay, then using this information, we can actually say for r that is greater than 1. Okay, then we have integral of this gamma r, f of z dz. Okay, this has to be the same thing as now then 2 pi i times residue of, say, z is equal to i, which is then going to be equal to e to the power of um, pi i over 2. Same thing as now then ln of i is just equal to pi i over 2. So that's why we can calculate this, right? So if you calculate this, then it has to be the same thing as 2 pi i times, okay, say pi i over 2 now, square, over 2 i. Okay, making the calculation for this. If you calculate this, then it has to be, say, okay, negative pi. Now times pi square over 4, which has to be the same thing as negative pi cube over 4. Okay, so that's why we can specify from this integral from negative infinity to infinity f of x dx. So this has to be equal to negative pi cube over 4. Okay, then we can talk about these two things then, on CR and then C epsilon, right? So first of all, let's talk about this on CR. So on CR, okay, absolute value of now f of z. That should be less than equal to um, ln of r now square plus pi square over r square minus 1. So that's why integral of now CR, f of z dz, that has to be less than equal to now then pi r, pi r times this ln square of r plus pi square, and then over r square minus 1. But then again, this right hand side, this right hand side is going to 0. This is now going to 0 if your r is going to infinity. Okay, then similarly, we can talk about this case number two. Case number two for this on C epsilon. It's going to be the same absolute value of integral C epsilon, F of Z, and then DZ. That has to be now then less than equal to now pi epsilon times ln square of epsilon plus pi square over, now in this case, one minus epsilon square. Also, this one is going to zero if your epsilon is going to infinity, right? Okay, then all of these information, we can represent this negative pi cube over four into two integrals. One of them has to be integral from negative infinity to zero. Then we have ln of absolute value of the x plus i pi now square over 1 plus x squared, and then we have dx. The other one has to be the integral from 0 to infinity. Then we have just ln squared x over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, but then again, this integral from negative infinity to 0. And then ln of ln square of absolute value of dx over 1 plus x squared dx. This has to be the same thing as integral from 0 to infinity of ln square x over 1 plus x square dx. Then at the same time, this i12, right? We already know that your integral from negative infinity to 0, then 2 pi i times ln of absolute value of x over 1 plus x square dx. This is now equal to 0. Okay, then from this, we can obtain Negative pi cube over 4. Okay, negative pi cube over 4 has to be the same thing as 2 times integral from 0 to infinity, ln square x over 1 plus x square and dx. Okay, the right-hand side has to be the same thing as now, then negative pi square. Uh, that times integral from negative infinity to now 0. 
of 1 over 1 plus x squared and dx. Okay, so this integral has to be the same thing as now. So it has to be negative pi now squared times arctangent. Arctangent of 0 uh, minus arctangent of negative infinity. So that's why if you calculate this, then it has to be the same thing as negative pi now squared times pi over now 2. That's why we have now this pi cubed over 4. It has to be the same thing as 2 times integral from 0 to infinity. And then we have ln squared x over 1 plus x squared dx. So we got the answer. So that's why now the answer for this question, integral from 0 to infinity ln squared x over 1 plus x squared. This has to be the same thing as pi now cubed over 8. So pi cubed over 8 is the answer for this question. So pretty interesting integral, so I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.